Next up, on WTV, changes to the PSAT, this week's schedule, and today's sports. WTV's daily update starts now. Hey there, Red Hog Nation. Today is Tuesday, October 3rd, and I'm Sarah Bangali with today's daily update brought to you by Wingspan TV. Tomorrow's PSAT test will look different from those of past years. WTV's Haley Johnson explains. The PSAT is an annual test to help get students ready for the SAT, but it will look a lot different this year as it's the first time the PSAT is going to online. Students will need to use a Frisco ISD Chromebook that is fully charged, and if they do not have one, one will be provided for the test. The digital format for the test brings other changes according to campus testing coordinator Ashley Stipe. One of the changes to that is that the test is going to be a little bit shorter than it's been in the past. Um, the average student or uh, the standard rooms will finish in about two and a half hours. So if everything goes as planned and every room starts on time, we will, students will be dismissed by 1215 for advisory on that day. For almost 100 years, the PSAT and SAT have been a written exam, but over the past few years, it has been transitioning into a fully virtual assessment. Along with becoming digital, the PSAT has adjusted to a new form of questioning with an adaptive questioning method. Through computerized adaptive testing, the test will alter questions for students in real time to adjust to the students' needs. Testing room assignments were emailed out on September 29th, and they are also posted in the rotunda and academic hallways. Reporting for WTV, I'm Haley Johnson. The A and B day schedule is looking a bit different this week. WTV's Lauren Pratt has more information. This week's schedule is far from typical. With the PSAT being administered to all sophomores and juniors Wednesday morning, all other students will have late arrival at 1245. Afterwards, students will attend their 3A and 4A classes like normal. However, the atypical schedule doesn't stop there. To make up for missed instructional time on Wednesday, Thursday will also be an A-day, resulting in a back-to-back A-day -back schedule. Yeah, it's going to feel like a day off and then I'm going to go back to school and it's not going to feel like a day off because I have to go to those classes that I supposedly had a day off for. <laughs> so yeah. it's going to be kind of sad, but I'm OK also because it's an early release day for me. Finally, students will not have school on Friday as it is a teacher professional development day. Reporting for WTV, I'm Lauren Pratt. On today's sports, WTV's Ryan Shapiro brings you a look into Red Hawk athletics. Hoping to finish round one of district play undefeated, volleyball visited Lebanon Trail on Friday. The Red Hawks would come away with another win, improving their record to 7-0 in District 10-5A. Taking a quick look at the standings, the Red Hawks sit in first place by two games. Looking to keep a 10-game win streak alive, the Red Hawks play Emerson tonight at the Nest at 7 p.m. In their final regular season game of the year, the Red Hawks will have one more shot to possibly improve their playoff seeding. It won't be an easy task, though, as the Red Hawks go down the street to visit the best team in 5A State, the Centennial Titans. The match will start at 4 p.m. at Centennial. In their final meet before districts, Cross Country went to Grand Prairie for the Ken Gaston Invitational. For the girls, Cindy Wilkins and Sophia Galladay finished first and sixth, and Kaylin Rubeck, Samantha Deschetletter, and Sophie Lopez placed in the top 30, helping to lead the team to a second-place finish. This would be the highest placement out of any of the 5A teams competing. The guys had a tougher time, placing near the middle in 29th. Swim and dive continue their season tonight. The Red Hawks hope to do even better than the last time they competed. It'll take place at the Bruce Eubanks Natatorium today at 6 p.m. Reporting for WTV, I'm Ryan Shapiro. If you are looking for more from Wingspan, you can follow us at Liberty Wingspan on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, or visit our award-winning website, libertywingspan.com. And now for today's announcements. Attention AP students, AP exam payment for full year and fall AP courses is now open through November 1st. Payment will be made online through online school fees. Students not enrolled in an AP course but want to take an AP exam must contact campus testing facilitator Leslie Thompson at thompsonle at friscoic.org. You must register and pay by November 1st deadline to avoid late fees. If you have completed algebra and geometry with at least an 85 average and enjoy math, Mu Alpha Theta might be the right club for you. We will have our first informational meeting on Thursday, October 5th during advisory in the lecture hall. We will discuss the application process and club activities. See Ms. Romery in C218 with any questions. 
October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Today's tip is don't give out personal information without your parents' permission. This means you should not share your last name, home address, school name, or telephone number. Remember, just because someone asks for your information about you does not mean you have to tell them anything about yourself. Are you interested in making or playing music with other musicians from the school? Music Collaboration is the club for you. Come to the first club meeting today in room C203 during advisory. Please join the Remind to stay updated on club details and officer positions. Remind at LHSMCC123. This is a non-extracurricular club unaffiliated with Frisco ISD. Tonight at 6.30 p.m., orchestra will be having their fall concert. This will be their first concert of the year. The concert will take place in the Liberty High School Auditorium. All friends, family, and teachers are welcome to come and enjoy the performance. That's it for today's daily update. This is Sari Bengali for Wingspan TV.